Today is the fourth day of the month of Cheshvan, and today we are going to be, going to be doing the entire chapter 8, paragraphs 1 through 6. Chapter 8 discusses things that we are not supposed to do before we pray in the morning. Now something to note before we begin is that this chapter primarily applies to men. While there is a biblical mitzvah to pray, and there's a, a disagreement between Ram, Rambam Maimonides and Ramban Nachmanides exactly what that, what that mitzvah consists of, the standardized prayer that we do was instituted primarily by the leading rabbis during this time of the Second Temple, known as the Anshei Knesset Hagadola. They're the ones that formalize the prayer services and all the rules about minyan, the different blessings that we say, etc. So when they instituted this, they only instituted it for men. They never required a woman to do all these blessings, to do all these prayers. Because traditionally, the women were the ones at home taking care of children, and children do not have a time schedule. When a diaper has to be changed or a child has to be fed, you can't schedule that in. And since there's a lot of scheduling and time required for formal services, therefore when they instituted these formal services, they said this applies only for the men, not for the ladies. So of course, women are invited and welcome to join a minion. They're welcome to join a full service but if they can't, if the schedule doesn't allow for it, it's totally fine for them to pray on their own, pray much less than what we do in regular service. The minimum that a woman should do is the Birch HaShachar, the morning blessings. You can find this in the Art Scroll Sitter beginning on page number 12. They actually could skip the opening paragraphs if they'd like um, and start with the blessing themselves halfway down on page 14. If they're able to do more, fantastic. The next thing is probably the Shema and Shemona Esrei. If they're able to join a minion and pray with a minion, even better. But that's not expected. And women are no way required to. So all of these laws that we're going to talk about today, about what we could do before praying, what we can't do before praying, with men we're talking about before they pray morning services. With ladies, it's merely before they say the morning blessings. So paragraph one. The earliest that a person is able to pray morning services is at dawn. Dawn halakhli is defined as when the first rays of light are starting to be able to be, to be seen over the horizon. Really, the Shemona Esri, the Amidah, should not be said until sunrise, which is a little bit later. However, if it was said from dawn already, it's still a valid prayer and it counts. With that in mind, once dawn arises, actually half an hour before dawn, because already coming up to the time where we could pray Shachars, pray the morning service, there's a number of things we're supposed to refrain from. Anything which takes time, something which could get us involved and cause us to forget about morning services we're supposed to not get involved in, we're not supposed to head out on a journey early in the morning, in pressing situations we could start early with, you know, having in mind that we got to stop to pray the morning services, but really it's best to not start any trip beforehand. Our day should start out praying to God, connecting to God. Paragraph 2. We're not supposed to eat or drink in the morning before we pray. It's considered arrogant. We're taking care of our, of our physical needs before taking care of our spiritual needs by connecting to God. Drinking water is not a problem. We're going to see a bit later. Drinking coffee or tea also is fine. But more than that shouldn't be done unless either somebody is weak or has some illness. They need some strength. And especially if they need that to dive and to pray, then they could eat to give, them the, to give themselves the strength to pray properly. We'll find this more often on Shabbos morning during the week because Shabbos morning... Prayer, prayer services is usually later in the day, and also it's much longer service, so then it's more likely somebody would have to eat something before services to be able to get through services properly. Paragraph 3. There are those that say that even if you get up in the middle of the night, you shouldn't eat or drink until you pray in the morning. If you're able to do that, great, but if not, that's not really the halacha. You are able to eat or drink before morning prayers as long as before half an hour before dawn. Paragraph 4. We mentioned earlier that you're allowed to drink water or coffee and tea before before praying in the morning. Whether you could add sugar and milk or creamer into your coffee is discussed, but practically speaking, you could add sugar, sweetener, and creamer to your coffee. On Shabbos morning, we're not supposed to eat until we hear Kiddush. Does one have to make Kiddush if they want a coffee before prayers in the morning? The answer is no. Because the obligation of Kiddush doesn't begin until we finish praying Shacharis, until we finish praying the morning service, therefore if you're eating something or having something to drink before, before prayers begin, you don't yet have the mitzvah of Kiddush, and therefore you don't have to worry about making Kiddush before having something to drink. If you need something substantial to eat, 
because somebody's ill, you have to take some medication or some food, so you have to have something real, something much more substantial, then we'll see when we get to the laws of Shabbos, what to do, do you have to worry about being Kiddush before services begin, and how to deal with that. Paragraph 5. It's not appropriate to go visit somebody or to go out of your way to somebody to wish them a good morning. We didn't, so to speak, wish God a good morning yet. We're going to go wish other people a good morning. So if you meet somebody, then it's not a problem to wish them good morning. You don't have to be rude to someone because you didn't pray it. But you shouldn't go out of your way to wish somebody else good morning. And if you do meet somebody, then you definitely shouldn't, even, even if you meet somebody, you shouldn't say to them a standard greeting and an appropriate greeting generally would be Shalom or Shalom Aleichem. But that definitely shouldn't be done even if somebody greets you because that's one of God's names. You're using God's name to greet somebody else before, so to speak, greeting God himself. And therefore, even if you meet someone, you should make sure to say good morning to them, not shalom to them. Once somebody does say the morning blessings, then at that point they could wish shalom to somebody who they meet. Paragraph 6. Not only are we not supposed to eat or drink again and go on a journey before we pray, even studying Torah before praying could be a problem. Because the nature of Torah study is sometimes we get so caught up in it we lose track of time. At least that's how it should be. However, somebody who prays in shul usually, they go to synagogue for morning services, they're able to study Torah before they pray because since they have a daily schedule, there's no concern they'll get too caught up and they'll miss services that they'll forget to pray. Also, even if somebody is not going to be praying in it with a minion, but they have some sort of learning session with a group of other people, since learning in a group is extremely important and special, then they could participate in that learning session before praying. But they should make sure it's set an alarm or something of that sort so they don't forget, they don't get too sidetracked, and they make sure to pray. This concludes today's episode. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.